some bullets. Hey everyone, it's Shelby, and today we are going to be talking about my Millie's Inn paranormal experience. Of course, the website talks about a lot of the bed and breakfast stuff that you can get there because it is a bed and breakfast, but they also have a little snippet of like their haunted stuff or whatever. Near the inn, you'll notice a cemetery from the War of 1812. Be sure to check out our haunted tours that take place August 15th and October 23rd and 24th this year. Now, when I went to Millie's Inn, it was because my friend Alexis knew someone who knew the person who ran it and was having an investigation of their own and told her that she could bring along some friends. We ended up bringing along a lot of people and I even have a picture on my Instagram if you scroll far enough from I think it was November 11th 2014 which was a lot later than these haunted tours are and with different people than the haunted tours that they have scheduled now like for this year. And this was two years ago. It was a different paranormal group. There was actually two there and the group that my group of friends ended up going with was NF Paranormal. I will have their links in the description because they have EVPs from that night that you can check out. I don't know what day they were posted. I think it will just say Millie's in and then have the EVPs underneath. I was really glad that I chose that group instead of the other group that was there. I had a really good experience with that group. My group ended up having to get split into two. There was two girls there and two guys there. My group that I was in ended up going into the like basement first with the two guys and then we were with them for the rest of the night. But before we were in the house and like going around Millie's and we decided to check out the cemetery. We didn't really get much in the cemetery. We had K2 meters, which in case you didn't know what a K2 meter is, this is it. You just saw it light up. If I press the button, that's it's lighting up. And if it lights up more, that means there's something close by with a lot of energy. I don't know, I haven't used this in a really long time. Basically, you want it to get to red because that is when you know you're having a strong communication with a ghost or whatever. When we were in the cemetery, they did get most of their EVPs were in the cemetery. But when they were in the cemetery, we were like taking pictures and stuff. I never really got any orbs in pictures or anything. Um, these, the K2 meter, I'm going to leave this on in case something goes, in case it goes off. Um, the K2 meters did go off a little bit, but there wasn't really much, and people were getting, like, kind of anxious and like, let's go do the Millie's in, in part. <laughs> and so, not much happened in the cemetery. We talked about, like, their creepiest experiences and stuff, and their, like, scariest one was when they had to dismantle a alter to the devil. Other than hearing about their ghost stories and stuff, not much happened, um, but there are some EVPs of like singing and I think screaming on their website. I don't know if it's changed or if they took the EVPs down, so hopefully they didn't. After nothing really happened in the cemetery other than um, a couple lights of the K2 meter and stuff, we went to the inn. We split up into two groups. And my group, I believe, let me think, my best friend Alexis, you've seen her in lots of my videos, my friend Jake, my other friend Jake, Jericho, and Jake's date, which I forget his name, it was like Adam or Mark or something like that. My group went down into the basement first, and the basement used to be an old apartment and the guy who lived there supposedly murdered someone and then just ran off into the woods and never came back. We weren't sure if the story was true, but it was kind of like a cool thing to know that that was something that was most likely happened because the owner had told them about it and I don't know why she would really lie about that. We were in the basement which they were redoing because they wanted to make it a room for people to be able to stay in so there was a lot of like exposed wires and stuff but the electricity because there was exposed wires they had a lot of the electricity down there shut off so we knew because k2 meters can act up to electricity and stuff um they're used for electricians do use them to like find open wires and stuff like that but 
they went around the basement to show us that like none of the wires were live so that would not be affecting our experiment and stuff so eventually we made it into this like long hallway and they set the k2 meter down on like some of these like uh pc oh uh, moth Um, set them down on a couple of these like PCP pipes that were just like laying on the ground. They weren't hooked up to anything. Circuit breaker was next to us and it was like shut off and stuff. And we had like two flashlights or something like that. And everyone had their phones because we were taking EVPs and stuff. We were all standing in this room. We, it was kind, we were kind of in like a candy cane form. It was like um, Jimmy and then the other guy, then me and like uh, Jake Jericho. No, Jericho was on the end of Alexis. Like Jake, Jake, Alexis, Jericho, and we were kind of like, like this. The K2 meter was on the floor, and we began asking questions. And every now and again, the light would just go on randomly, and sometimes it seemed like it was answering our questions. Like, we don't know if this is real or not, but the K2 meter was going off. And when it went off, me and the two ghost, the two ghost people from NF Paranormal would get chills, and I was like. Dude, I'm like, I'm literally always sweating. I'm never cold. I'm like always pretty warm. It was fall, but it wasn't cold in there because we were all wearing our coats and stuff. And I was wearing sweatpants and like a sweatshirt and like my another sweatshirt over it. So you know I wasn't cold. But you could see the uh, hair on my arms go up and I like rolled up my sleeve and I showed them because I remember one of them saying, do you, are any of you like getting shivers whenever that goes off and like uh jimmy was like yeah and then i was like yeah i am and i'm usually like good in these situations so i don't know why i'm shivering and stuff like that i'm not cold and then the rest of the line was like no like we're okay so that was kind of odd after a while we really couldn't piece together what the ghost was saying jerko did ask if we should leave and it went red immediately but we were all like, we can't really leave yet, it'll be fine. We were like, hey, why don't we go into another room? And I remember one of the guys from MF Paranormal was like, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, when we walked in, because for some reason the bathroom was light was on and we didn't really know how I had electricity to it or anything, but we like went in and shut it off. But the guy was like, yeah, I didn't want to alarm anyone, but when we walked in, I saw like a shadow cross in front of that and I'm so glad that we did. We didn't go into the bathroom, we walked into the room like in front of the bathroom which I think was supposed to be like a kitchen for the when it was an apartment set up. Well first let's check to make sure like nothing's in the bathroom, like no one's hiding out trying to scare us or whatever. So one of the guys went into the bathroom and he like turned on the light and like looked in the shower and stuff like that. Um, and he had a K2 meter with him to see if anything would act up, and nothing really happened. Okay, my camera shut off. Anyways, but there was a mirror hanging on the back of the door and one hanging on the wall across from the door. We were all like just talking and stuff and making jokes, and I think it was Jimmy who was like, he was like, Hey guys, if you have mirrors across, which I do have mirrors <laughs> across from each other. He was like, if you have mirrors across from each other, that's supposed to like, uh, open a portal. And my friend Jake was like, like, to what? And he paused. And then, um, I was listening to my recordings that I had taken that night. And you hear, you hear something. But then he goes to the underworld like as a joke and we all started laughing we're like haha yeah and then he like shut off the light and it was whatever but I'm going to insert now what I heard later when I was going through my recordings at that part which was really weird because we were talking about how mirrors can open up portals for like ghosts and stuff like that and when Jake paused it was almost as if like this ghost was answering him except the word he said was not a word that like was real. It's not a real word unless I can't understand what it's saying. It was a word that none of us had ever heard so we knew that it couldn't have been any of us in the room. I never sent it to the paranormal investigators but the one was talking at that time and I really doubt the other one was whispering to like 
whispering words that didn't exist so that we would get freaked out or something. But I'll insert that now. I want you to know if you have any mirrors in your rooms that are across from each other, move them. <laughs> I guess it was supposed to open up a portal to, um, to the underworld. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. What I think it's saying is biotafe, which isn't even a real word. But when I put it in reverse, it just sounded like whispering or like someone like breathing in like that or something. I don't know. It was really weird and was the first DVP that I've ever gotten. I really enjoyed the fact that I got an EVP at all. If none of us knew how to say it or knew that it was a word at the time, then how could we have whispered it and stuff? Of course I could be hearing someone wrong or someone whispering over someone, but it sounded like one clear, like no interruptions, someone was saying biotech and that was it. So that was pretty cool. But kind of after that they were like, okay, these kids are gonna be joking around. So we were like, okay, nothing was really happening here, let's just go. And as we were leaving, there was like a room with a bunch of stuff in it. They were like moving out from the basement type area. And so I would like walked in there because I thought that's where we were going next. And then I heard one of the guys behind me was like, oh, you want to go in here? And I was like, oh, I thought we were going in here. He's like, oh, we didn't, we didn't go in here last night. So I stopped like when I was in the room and let everyone catch up. And the two guys from NF Paranormal walked in and his K2 meter started going off like full blast, like red constantly. And so he was like, oh, there must be something live in here, like something's got to be plugged in or something. So we started walking around, we like turned on all our flashlights to see, and he's holding the K2 meter to everything, and it's just green. It's just like this, this little green, not at red like when he had walked in the room. And he's like holding it to the outlets, into the roof and stuff, to see if there's any live wires or anything plugged in. There was a lamp. But that wasn't even plugged into the wall. All the outlets, nothing were plugged in. There was literally nothing. So we were like, okay, that's weird. So we set the K2 meter up and we kind of just shut off all our lights. And we're asking questions and literally nothing happened that whole time. The K2 meter never budged at all. Which you think it would have at least a little bit if something was like electric in there and the wires were live or something, but nothing happened. After that we went into like a garage, nothing happened, we just talked about some more ghost stories and then we went upstairs and had the other group go downstairs. We went into another room and they were telling us about how the girl that had been the girls room because they had spent the night before and that they kept feeling like an energy bounce, there was two beds, bounce from bed to bed but only when the girls were in the room, not like when guys were in the room. So they thought maybe it was like a little kid or something that was like jumping on the bed and was like trying to get the girls to play with them or something. So I was like, okay, well I'm gonna go sit down on this bed because I want something to happen to me. So I sat down and the only other girl in our group was Alexis and I was like, hey Alexis, come sit down. And she was like, there's no way I'm sitting there. So for a while I sat there alone with the K2 meter next to me and it went off quite a bit, but I ended up zoning out. My friend Jake came and sat next to me. And we were sitting there, I was like looking out the window, zoning out, and I felt like a pressure on my lap. And I didn't really think anything of it until one of the guys was like, hey, it's lighting up. And I like looked over and saw that the thing was really lighting up, and I was like, oh, that's weird. And they were like, why is that weird? It's been happening all night. And I was like, no, I just felt like a pressure on my legs. And he was like, really? And I was like, yeah, I wouldn't make this stuff up. But I don't know if they really believed me or anything, they thought maybe I was just making it up, but I wasn't. And Jake was like, I I didn't feel anything, and I was like, well I did, like, it, it felt like someone was pushing on my legs, or someone just sat, like if it's a kid, or like Alexis sits on my lap, like if someone were to sit on my lap, that's what it felt like. I felt like something else happened in that room, but I can't really remember right now. My camera shut off again. We did end up going oh, into this room off of the living room and it just had a bed in it and there was like a bathroom connected to it I think and it was really late in the night and one of the Jake's, Jake, not the one that came with the date, the other Jake, was getting tired so we just sat down on the bed and we were getting um, a lot of activity on the K2 
meter and so we were like trying to egg it on. The K2 meter was going off a lot and Jake was like, wow, is it me or is it really cold over here? And I'm like, 30 degrees warmer than it was when we were in the basement, what are you talking about? So Alexis walked over to him and she's like, I don't know, I guess it feels kind of like a little bit colder. And the paranormal investigator people were not really paying attention to us at this time, but we were, because we were just kind of like chilling in the room and they were asking like serious questions to Millie and stuff and so I walked over and I'm like Jake I don't I don't know I don't really feel feel that it's much colder but again I was like wearing heavy layers and stuff I I was like maybe it's just you but then when I walked back over I noticed that it got warmer so I was like okay Jake maybe maybe it's a little bit colder over there and when he said um it was like after I walked away and he was like, uh, guys, it's a lot colder over here. The K2 meter like went up a ton. The reason that I'm bringing this up is because on their website, they have, we weren't, Jake wasn't getting good vibes in that room. And on the website, I was listening to some of their EVPs and I remember like them saying exactly what they were saying. So I knew it wasn't from like another group or something. And this certain EVP where they get like, leave me alone. Someone like yelling, leave me alone. And Jake was not, and we were asking like a ton of questions in this room. And I remember one of the guys asking something in the EVP and then having the ghost say, leave me alone. And then right after that you hear Jericho or Alexis like laugh because they were joking with each other and I'm like that's crazy because Jake was like yo it's cold I'm not getting good vibes and stuff like that. Well, it was kind of weird to hear that EVP and having a ghost say leave me alone and stuff like that and then I was listening to my own recordings and did not get that so you know it wasn't just someone like in the basement you know leave me alone to try and scare us. The whole experience all together was so much fun I would totally want to do it again, again with the same group, and if Paranormal was freaking awesome, I, like, dude, let me join your Paranormal group. This video was probably so long, and I've probably forgotten so much that I should have added into this video, but I really don't want to keep you guys watching this for another 20 minutes. Check out the links in the description. Subscribe if you want to hear more ghost stories, want me to go on more paranormal hunts and take you guys along with me. Um, subscribe if you want to just see more cool videos from me. Like this video if you thought it was pretty cool. If you believe in ghosts, if you don't believe in ghosts, like it anyway. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye!